Modern air war depends on situational awareness of the battle space. Command and control has become a specialty in and of itself. In the U.S. arsenal, it operates three C-2 aircraft, the E-3 Sentry, the E-2 Hawkeye, and the J-Stars. The Russians have adopted similar technology with their mainstay AEW aircraft, and future technologies such as the Wedgetail have shown that the future of airborne command and control is relatively bright. Additionally, Saab has developed their Global Eye concept, taking a business jet and turning it into a robust command and control system. This goes along with a recent trend in military aviation, which is taking business jets and retrofitting them for military missions. The E-37B is the aircraft that most comes to mind. It's a modified Gulfstream designed to carry out electronic attack, but there are examples from numerous other countries as well. But what does it take to turn a business jet into a military surveillance aircraft? Well, it turns out quite a bit. Here's a business jet that I built to play with different aerodynamic properties with high and low wings. With a four plus hour endurance, it seemed like a good platform from which to start. The CF-09B high wing business jet model is a small business jet designed for VIP transport over long distances. It's powered by two high bypass turbofan engines mounted under the wings, generating in-game 20 kilonewtons of thrust each and an intake diameter of about 1.25 meters. It has a crew of two pilots. It's 16.7 meters, 54.7 feet long with a wingspan of eight meters, 59 feet. It has a service ceiling of 40,000 feet, but it'll take a half hour to get there as you burn fuel. For speeds, on a standard day at sea level max weight, it will rotate at 150 knots. Its max endurance airspeed is 230 knots and its landing speed at max weight is 130 knots. For endurance, it can do a little over 4 hours with a range of over 1,200 nautical miles. It's roughly comparable to the Learjet 35, which is what the design was ultimately based on. Its military variant though, the EC-11 Heron, is what results from the changes to the design. It has two high bypass triple fan engines, however they are upgraded to produce 70 kN instead of the 20 kN on the business jet. All this extra power is required to overcome the extra weight and drag from the radar. This was done by turning the maximum temperature up to 11 and increasing the blade count from 16 to 20. The engine diameter is also 10% bigger for both the engine core and the fan. And as a result, the engines can overheat after 10 minutes, so the pilot needs to pull back its power to 75% to climb. It also has a crew of two, plus room for two controllers in the cabin. It has a length of 17 meters or 55 feet and a wingspan of 19.4 meters, 63 feet. It has a service ceiling of only 25,000 feet as a result of the extra weight and drag from the radome. On a standard AC level max weight, it rotates at 170 knots versus 150 on the business jet model. Its max endurance speed is a 200 knots and its maximum weight approach speed is 175 knots. Endurance at 200 knots is three hours and five minutes without refueling. For comparison, a simple Google search will tell you that the E-2 Hawkeye has a seven hour endurance. The Heron has a range of over 650 nautical miles. Since the command and control mission is critical, a refueling probe was added to the nose. It's retractable so that it doesn't get in the pilot's view during landing. Additionally, the radome affected the weight and balance enough that the batteries that were in the aft section of the aircraft had to be moved to the nose. Also, the antenna layout needed to be completely revised in order to maintain line of sight with the clear sky. In flying the airplane, you can definitely feel that it's top heavy, not in an unstable way, just kind of in a sluggish way. Speaking of stability though, the strakes in the rear of the jet were enlarged in order to add stability about the vertical axis. The size and changes came through a series of flight tests that I flew and did not record, but the results speak for themselves. Returning to flying characteristics, the jet doesn't really want to climb nearly as well as the original business jet version either. For landing, you have to be really on the landing speed, otherwise it will oscillate back and forth as you land. The addition of spoilers, though not present on the original jet, help to control speed and keep it from being too fast and can help slow it down on the runway as well. Now, it's worth noting that if slow in your approach speed, the aircraft will easily stall. And that's a summary of the modifications from the CF-09B into the EC-11 Heron. Now let's do the part everybody likes, which is take it into the sky and see how it flies.
This video outlines the challenges faced when turning an existing aircraft into a military version with its special equipment. Do you think this aircraft is practical? What different decisions would you make? Leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.